While I may have wagged my finger at numerous exploitation films of the past, I guess there's one thing I can't take away from skin flicks of the 70s. At least they figured out who the Zodiac Killer is. Sure, you may know of the Zodiac Killer as the mysterious figure who killed multiple people in Northern California from the 1960s through the early 70s, but what you didn't know is that in reality, the Zodiac Killer was a deranged mailman named Jerry who had a fondness for rabbits and was also a devil worshipper. The 1971 film The Zodiac Killer is uh, amazing for all kinds of reasons, but the backstory behind the film is completely and utterly fascinating. The film was directed by Tom Hansen, who you might remember as the director of the 1972 movie A Ton of Grass Goes to Pot. Fear not, cow! There was plenty of grass used to make this film as well! Hansen directed this film with the intent of actually capturing the Zodiac Killer. Thinking that surely the real Zodiac would attend the theatrical screening of the movie, the premiere of the film offered a free motorcycle to audience members who filled out an essay question that began with, I believe the Zodiac kills because blank. It was believed that they could match the handwriting of the answers with the handwriting of the real Zodiac Killer. But unfortunately, Vanishing Point was also released around the same time, so Zodiac went to see that instead. And the only person they caught at this movie's premiere was Scorpio. The film starred Hal Reed as Zodiac, who was also seen in the other Tom Hansen movie. There's plenty of other bad cult movies that link up to this film. The movie was co-written by Manny Cardoza, and I don't know this for sure, I just have a hunch he's somehow related to B-movie producer Tony Cardoza, since this film's director played Justine in Red Zone Cuba, which Tony Cardoza produced, and the film's other co-writer, Ray Cantrell, worked on another Cardoza-produced film, The Hellcats. I do have respect for the movie, for one thing, not many movies like this actually try capturing serial killers. Plus, it flat out says at the beginning, eh, look, we're not trying to win any awards here. San Francisco Chronicle reporter Paul Avery, who was played by Robert Downey Jr. in the David Fincher Zodiac film, served as a consultant on this movie. As we see when the movie tells us, it's simply trying to raise awareness in people who think that this kind of thing can't happen here. Well, that book was a wasted purchase. I'm not sure, but I think Austin Powers may be a killer. And that this movie is trying to make its audience paranoid. Many of you, in fact, have been watched by a murder. Someone very possibly sitting next to you or behind you. Okay, sure, Ted Bundy is next to me in the theater, but really, he's just trying to watch the film. Remember, this movie is based on facts. See, this is how the Zodiac came up with his symbol. I feel safe. We've got Hank from Breaking Bad solving things. Just kidding. This is Grover, played by Bob Jones. Bob Jones? <laughs> Dad? He's a truck driver who hates bitches. That no good bitch was holding me back. Hey, come on, how do you call her a bitch? She's the mother of your little girl. I tell you, she's no good. Easy, easy. Chicks, bro! Jerry the mailman is out delivering red herrings, but unfortunately no one will sign for Grover. What's worse than dealing with serial woman hater Grover? Cranky old ladies. How you ever got this job, I'll never know. Oh, shut up! Quit picking on me. Don't you shout at me. That's weird. He sounds like the guy in the opening narration. Surely he can't be the killer. And how does Jerry the Zodiac Killer seem to be the most normal one here? I swear I don't know what's worse, the little old ladies or the big old lady. Once they get over 20, they're all no damn good. Well, you see, when they get 20, that's the turning point. Stop kidnapping teenagers and putting them in your basement, Grandpa. Don't let them dames get their claws on you ever. Well, you don't mind if I get my claws on some of them young ones, do you, Doc? Be my guest. Yeah, careful. You'll fit right in as the chef from Sleepaway Camp. If you get any leftovers or extras, remember, I, I like them plump and juicy. Uh, I hope he's talking about P. 
pizza rolls. Anyway, after that cameo from Albert Fish, if there's one thing Zodiac does like, it's rabbits. Oh God, no. What's the matter, Leo? God, he's dead. Why are evil people allowed to live? And if you think there won't be an emotional burying scene... We're all gonna miss you. I don't need to tell you, Leo. You were my favorite. Based on a true story. Oh, right. This is where he has to pick up the ransom money from Dirty Harry after kidnapping Anne-Marie Deacon. Grover is hitting the singles scene now. He might be able to pick up some women. This was years before Trump ruined this look for us all. Unfortunately, with no Johnny Charo, guests at this bar are forced to talk to each other. And some are quite rude. Sir, do you have 20 cents for a cup of coffee? Yep. I think I'll get a drink instead. Being a murderer is one thing, but does the Zodiac Killer have to be such a dick? It's actually Grover who asks Jerry to be his wingman. And that's not the weirdest thing that happens. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Creep. That was weird. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled program of hitting on bar girls. I want you to meet a very good friend of mine. Jerry, this is Licky. This is Donna. Hi. Grover, your girls are malfunctioning. At this point, it just shows snippets of random conversations going on in the bar. And I swear, I did not edit this sequence. The divorce is the only answer. I do love you. I don't love you. <laughs> what is the context of any of that? Are they all trying to distract themselves from this ashtray orgy going on in the corner? To think, it gets more awkward. Grover yells at them not to touch his hair, then tries attacking them, and then they laugh at him as if they couldn't already tell that that was a damn wig. So that's why the Zodiac killed this couple, because of an awkward encounter he witnessed involving a bad wig. At least with the toupee, Grover got to sleep with something hairy. Listen, bitch. I'll get the kid a few toys for Christmas. So don't bug me. Mm, I'm starting to think Grover was a bad husband. Let's go to Flo's to nurse this hangover. Grover comes in because today is the bitch special. That's where if you call the waitress a bitch, you get a free side of sass. Just don't talk about rabbits. Delicious rabbits do. Nobody should eat rabbits. Oh, everybody likes rabbits do. It's delicious. Hey, listen. I really don't give a shit. I don't want any rabbits do. Does the Zodiac Killer just picture Elmer Fudd whenever he kills someone? Can't imagine why Grover and the waitress's date didn't go over well. You don't remember what you said to me the other night when you were drunk in front of 20 people? But you called me an easy piece. Well? I oh, guess you got me there. <laughs> Let's go on that second date. This movie's so low budget, she's got to give the director a ride home. Keep him protected, we gotta finish the movie. <laughs> Great, now the rest of it's gonna have to be directed by the guy who did Another Son of Sam. Get Johnny Charo and hair and makeup stat. Grover is brought in for questioning about being the killer because of, and I'm not kidding, assault, indecent exposure, harassing police, and... Proceeded to urinate in customers' drinks, yelling, the fountain of youth lives? You should probably arrest this guy, regardless of him being the killer or not. It isn't even all that illegal shit that they're grilling him about. They're mostly concerned with him lying about being a businessman in order to pick up women in bars. Anyway, since you didn't really kill anyone, we'll wipe your slate clean. You can go. You know, Ken, I get bad feelings from that one. Thanks. You're truly the Columbo of this precinct. Back to the Zodiac plot, the newspaper editor receives the letter from the Zodiac killer and also a letter from Grover demanding his toupee back. It's madness. It's total madness. Well, no one's ever accused him of being the actor-in-chief. 
I guess it was okay to let Grover go. Psych! He barges into his ex-wife's house, and when she says half of their child is hers and she has custody, he grabs a saw to cut the child in half. Come here! Old Testament God is trying to teach me a lesson! Eh, that's too jerky. Here, I'll hold you at gunpoint instead. And for no reason, he does this. The Zodiac! That's me! I'm the Zodiac! No, you're not. This movie's only 38 minutes in. You're a no-good, rotten liar! And despite him not being the Zodiac killer, it's probably still for the best that Grover is gone. The real killer demands an obituary for Grover's toupee as well. Wait, the Zodiac was Jerry all along? <laughs> I should be a detective. I am the Supreme Zodiac. I must not let the animal nature of man block the way to my spiritual progress. Oh, and he's also a devil worshipper. Should have seen that coming, since he buys his meat from Fuad Ramses. Damn it, the Hell's Bells documentary warned us that rock and roll would make Zodiac killers. Listen to this backmasking. I have selected each and every one of you. How can you prove that you selected us? How? Huh? How? Yes. Mm, I bet that really happened. Add hardcore pornography in this and it's a serial killer version of Rites of Uranus. Sometimes I don't even know if I'm watching the same movie. The thing that really impressed me was the way he made me feel. This is the first time I've ever felt that I'm part of the company. Meanwhile, in a male enhancement commercial... ...that they're counting on me to help make it work. That's great, Dick. And his name is even Dick! Excuse me, are you the Zodiac Killer? No. Okay, well, mind if we join you? And like all low-budget movies like this, <laughs> there is a moment of singing. As I, I walked out on the streets of Laredo... She was Johnny Charo's understudy. Uh, he's got hot dogs. He seems legit. No, no. I like the part about the guy that got shot. Oh, that's the end of it. Yeah, it comes... Well, that's a normal request. Sure, I'll skip to that part. And while he's away, let's look through his bag. Hello, a fake nose. Let's get out of here. Thanks again. It was great. Stick around, it'll get greater. Bye. You're too weird even for the 70s, Jerry. Oh, don't worry. This couple is still stupid. Something weird about that guy. Well, obviously he was mad at you for going through his things. Uh, I don't think he even saw me. Maybe we should go back and apologize, Dick. Being a serial killer in the 60s and 70s was easier than basic math. You know what else this is a good advertisement for? 70s parenting. Bobby, get down out of that tree, you'll break your neck. He won't mind. I haven't found a boy that will. Help me, mommy, mommy, help me. Oh my God. Don't worry, folks. Your friendly neighborhood Zodiac killer is here. There's a good side to everyone. What do you say to the nice man? Say thank you. I don't like him. Bobby! Careful, kid. He's gonna bang your mom. <laughs> Seriously. Now there's a gentleman. And handsome, too. Joanne, you're a married woman. Right? Why can't we all fall for strange men who walk by themselves through playgrounds and then disappear into the trees? While the movie does have some sequences in it that are based on real Zodiac killer murders, like the Lake Berryessa attack, but the way it's shot looks more like he's happening upon a lost Harry Reams hardcore sex scene. But if there's one person who gives good leads to the police, it is the killer. They want a white shit, me. <laughs> and I'm the one that did it. <laughs> I knew that James Dean faked his own death to become the Zodiac Killer. Being a killer and a mailman back then was great. Women auditioning for Bond girls were always trying to get in your pants. <laughs> the hell? I think she just raped the Zodiac Killer. Time to get out some frustration. Let's shoot this woman's tire out, and then when she mentions being a psychic, we'll see if she sees this coming. Help the guy to the door. Damn, she didn't see the tire coming, or that awkward edit. Now it gets into the Presidio Heights murder of a cab driver, and he's also the film's co-writer, Ray Cantrell. At this point, does he even need a disguise to get away with anything? Did you see anybody go by here? 
Yes, a guy just went by waving a gun. He headed across there. Okay, I'll check it out. <laughs> doop -de doop -de doop And people listening to the radio would like to believe that they'd figure out who the Zodiac Killer is. You know, it sure is creepy that madman isn't caught yet. He wouldn't fool me in a minute. Oh yeah, maybe you should look at the guy making the Zodiac Killer logo with salt. Now there's a really nice guy. Idiots. The psychic getting killed by the tire really inspired the police. They're on their way to see a psychic themselves to find the killer. And if that doesn't work, movie premiere stakeout. The killer could be right here in this room. Canada, I like killing people because it's so much fun. It's more fun than killing wild game in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all. I knew it. The Zodiac Killer was a very bad dog. Here's the psychic, another alumni of a ton of grass goes to pot, Aaron Coslow, as psychic Lucio Fulci. He has a hunch that the killer has a lucky rabbit's foot. Plus, last week, he purchased product from a health food store. So he's a no good commie tofu eater. That's just un American. Quick, make this guy an honorary officer. Water. I keep hearing water. Kitchen faucets dripping. You must go now. Well, that was money well spent. He didn't even tell the police about the random old guy killed in the elevator, or that Jerry is keeping the memory of Grover alive by using Grover's advice on picking up women. Drive them to the desert and chase them with a knife. And if you don't feel like flirting with them, just crush them with a car hood. <coughs> Were they expecting the real Zodiac Killer to jump up in the theater and say, Hey, I never did that! Or when the car rolled down a hill and almost murdered an innocent director and camera crew. Oh, and he's got a sick dad, too. Here he is at the hospital where Jeffrey the Giraffe is visiting a sick Ronald McDonald. Well, hello, Jerry. How's my favorite visitor? Can I have a dozen red roses, please? Hi, doggy! Jerry's dad is so sick that they keep him behind bars in the hospital. Maybe for being really annoying to other patients. Stop it! Stop that! Why can't you talk with me without pulling that damn stuff? No son of mine is gonna sneak ham into my jail cell slash hospital room. So, in case you're keeping track, the Zodiac Killer is a devil-worshipping mailman, and now we find out he's got severe mommy and daddy issues. Mother? Dad? Talk to me? Another way to catch the real Zodiac in the theater, see who laughs the loudest. How is this guy locked up, but all of these people ran free? I guess bars are really their only security here. Mm, hospital clowns are the worst. That wasn't funny. Now I'm gonna pretend that this guy said something about rabbits. Thanks, Jerry, for giving us the lost pilot to jackass. Ah, oh, good thing he didn't do that in broad daylight with tons of witnesses around! Now for some final words from Jerry's Travis Bickle fan fiction. What do you expect me to do? Turn myself in? Are you kidding? Well, I know you hear things like mentally maladjusted, schizophrenic, paranoid, and... Oh, yes. Your Webster's Dictionary says insane means absolutely hey, sense. They make one false arrest, fail to warn me of my rights, or because of suspicion, search my car. Where I keep my loaded gun. How do I feed myself, clothe myself, and hold down a job, if that's true? <laughs> Excellent. The Zodiac Killer was the original conspiracy blogger. Now just end the movie. Or try to, at least. Kinda. Sorta. <laughs> Boy, are they right. There's tons more Zodiac Killer movies that came out after this.
The most amazing thing about this movie is that it took me so long to get to it since referencing it in my seventh episode, Zero In and Scream. While they may have tried catching the Zodiac Killer, there may have been some other motivations here, too. The check or jail? Helen, what's with you? Chinese got it put right. They call it the year of the dog. Or better explained in English, the birth of the bitch. I'm not in the habit of having my broads walk out on me. Ham on right. <laughs> Think the writers may have been working through their issues after a nasty breakup. Well, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this movie is no David Fincher's Zodiac, but it is way better than Uli Lamel's Zodiac. This movie is like a drunk history take on who the Zodiac Killer might be. It's taught me the valuable lesson that not only is the Zodiac Killer bad, but so is everyone else ever. The way this movie was going, I expected the Zodiac Killer to be taken out by Mr. No Legs. Truly the versus movie that we all missed out on in the 70s. Instead, we just got this movie, which is clearly when Unsolved Mysteries jumped the shark. Hello? Zodiac. I don't know any Zodiac. 